thank you all for uh, for joining us here today. And uh, like uh, like Chris mentioned, I'm uh, Todd Brushweiler with Audix Microphones. I'm the national sales manager here, um, and uh, coming to you live from uh, remarkably sunny Wilsonville, Oregon. Uh, that's a town just a little bit south of Portland, Oregon. Um, and so we're uh, we're having a rare sunny day, um, which is which is wonderful. So um, let's just jump right in because I know we got a lot of stuff to get through. I'm going to be uh, moving uh, pretty quickly here. So like Chris said, uh, if you've got questions, just uh, put them into the question box and we'll get to them at the end. Um, we'll have plenty of time to answer all your questions. So um, starting out, this is, uh, this is our factory here in Wilsonville, Oregon. Um, uh, the company was founded um, back in 1984 um, by just two guys that, that had a passion for, for music and wanted to build a better mousetrap, so to speak. Uh, and they did that um, by listening to their, their fellow musicians. Um, and they developed this sort of uh, um, uh, way of thinking of application-specific designs. Um, we wanted to make microphones that were uh, simple to use and performed very well for the unique tasks that the artists needed to do. So a couple of quick examples of that. Um, if you look at our vocal mics, obviously not everybody's voice is the same. Wide variety of people out there from a soft, sultry female jazz singer to the crazy loud stadium rock stages for bands like uh, Pearl Jam, Eddie Vedder, um, and of course the Red Hot Chili Peppers are also Audix users. Um, so we've developed microphones that fit all of those different styles of voices and, and music. Uh, another example uh, from our conferencing side of microphones. Obviously, uh, this has become a big part of our business as the technology has developed with DSPs uh, and, uh, and networking technology. So obviously not every conference room is the same and there's different installation challenges for different size rooms, different acoustical environments, and we've developed lines of microphones to specifically meet the needs of all those different situations. Uh, another example would be our drum microphones. This is an area where we're uh, a leader of the industry and we've developed microphones for each particular type of drum. Uh, you look at uh, you know, a kick drum uh, versus a floor tom versus a rack tom. Those are three different size drums with very unique tonal characteristics, and they require a microphone that does slightly different things for each one of those instruments. So that's some examples of our application-specific design philosophy. It's not about price points. It's about applications. Uh, moving along, what's unique about Audix? Uh, everything is under one roof, start to finish. Um, trend today, a lot of companies, they're outsourcing as much as they possibly can. Um, while that can potentially make things cheaper, doesn't necessarily make things better. So um, we believe that there is a competitive advantage to being a US-based company all under one roof. Um, so why do we do that? Well, obviously one of the primary answers is quality control. Um, when everything's under one roof, it's a lot easier to uh, maintain uh, very high standards with regards to quality control. This is the one that I think means the most to me, being, uh, being a sales manager, um, is the level of service that we can provide. Audix is actually a, a much smaller company than most people realize, um, and that gives us uh, a, a unique opportunity to service our, our dealers and, and customers. Before I even worked for Audix, um, I was an Audix customer. And the thing that I liked most about this company was that when you called, somebody actually answered the phone 
a real person. It wasn't press one for this and press two for this person, and you wind up in somebody's voicemail box. Um, but when you call, you'll actually talk to a real person. Um, and of course, innovation. So having our design and our fabrication uh, and sales teams and marketing and everybody all under one roof lets us react more quickly to changing market conditions or uh, issues that a, a customer may have. They may have a, a unique situation for a, an install of a conferencing system. Um, and that level of feedback can quickly go from a customer service person or a salesperson all the way back to the production and design teams um, to come up with a solution. So it really speeds up the, the product cycle. The end result is quality of sound. Um, this is fundamentally so important to, to all of us. Um, and we never lose sight of what our, our end goal is. And that's, uh, that's sound quality. So here's where it all starts. Raw materials. This, again, this is all under one roof. So we're building these microphones, starting with raw bar stock of aluminum or brass, um, and even our, our raw materials. This is all US sourced material. Um, this is where the magic starts to happen. This is uh, just a few quick shots of our, uh, our machine shop. Um, Depending on the, the type of products we're building, there's different machines that we use. We can build things from, you know, machining large microphone bodies out of aluminum to, in some cases, we actually build our own screws. Um, so it all starts with 3D CAD drawings. Um, from there, those, uh, those drawings turn into instructions and machine code for our CNC machining centers. Um, here's just a few quick shots of, of some of the products being built. This is a D6, which is our kick drum microphone, uh, being uh, machined out of uh, a bar stock of aluminum. Um, here's some brass components being machined as well. Um, very cool stuff happening. And again, this is all under the same roof that, uh, that I'm talking to you from uh, in, uh, in Wilsonville, Oregon. So after the machining, this is another really unique thing that, that we do. Uh, not many companies have the, the technology to build their own circuit boards. So uh, the image there is our SMT. SMT stands for Surface Mount Technology. Um, this is how we create our circuit boards. Um, these boards can be used for prototyping new designs or actual finished goods production. Um, once the designs are, are finalized. Um, here's a quick video. This is that, that SMT line in action. And so what this machine is doing is it's picking individual components off of those spools of material in the, in the bottom, and it's placing them on the circuit board. So in the span of about 30 seconds, this machine is running the circuits for our M40 microphone. And that wafer that you see is 36 individual circuit boards, and that contains about 600 individual parts. Um, and it's going to place those parts and build 36 circuit boards in the span of about 30 seconds. So it's a pretty amazing thing to watch. Um, once all the components are uh, are machined and and uh, uh, assembled. Uh, then of course the microphones themselves are assembled by hand and we have a, a, a team of uh, individuals here and this is all they do is they sit in their little chairs and they put microphones together all day long and they do an amazing job at it. Um, from there, uh, before any microphone um, uh, goes out the door here, uh, it's tested. Uh, we have an anechoic chamber here on site that we use for developing our reference standards and every single microphone that comes off of our assembly line is tested. Uh, we don't do batch testing. Most of our other competitors do, uh, 
Um, if you're not familiar, batch testing is they'll pull maybe one out of every 100 mics that's coming off of the assembly line and test that one to look for it, look for any issues. Um, but uh, at Audix, every single microphone is tested against this reference standard. What that means is that every single microphone is consistent time after time after time. If you buy a, an OM2 vocal mic in 2010 and you buy another one in 2018, that mic is going to have the exact same frequency response. Uh, only after the microphones have passed that, that testing procedure, only then is it going to be branded and given a, a unique serial uh, number. And we do that with robots with lasers. Um, very, very cool stuff. I love going back into the back and watching all of our machines run. I guess I'm a, a bit of a geek when it comes to that, but uh, it's, it's very cool stuff. So what areas does Audix uh, perform in, so to speak? Um, obviously, we, we cut our teeth in the live sound side of things with, uh, you know, concert stages, we have artists, wide range of artists, from Willie Nelson to Tower of Power. You can see here these, these two images on the screen. Um, the lower left, that's Travis Barker with Blink-182. He's one of our, our Audix users. And uh, on the right, that's Andrew WK with his OM7 vocal mic, which he absolutely loves. Uh, another market for us that's uh, very big is the church and school market. I'm sure you guys already know all this. Uh, this is a huge market. Um, interesting fact, there's actually more products, musical products, being used in churches every week than in all of the concert venues, bars, nightclubs, all of that combined. There's more music happening in churches every week than there is um, with all of the professional musicians and clubs and, and everything out there. Uh, and Audix is a leader in this, in this microphone uh, category. So if you think about churches and schools, most of the people, they're volunteers. They're not professional sound engineers. So those application-specific mic designs really make it easy for them to get a great sound right out of the box, and that's why we do so well there. Um, conferencing, uh, you know, corporate type uh, 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 products. Um, this has been a huge growth category for us. Um, we, uh, you know, we're involved in, we've designed microphones for video conferencing systems, distance learning for universities, hospitals, courtrooms. Any kind of zone capture kind of stuff, whether it's multi-purpose rooms, huddle rooms, ambient room miking. Uh, we put a lot of microphones into uh, like interview rooms or surveillance type situations with law enforcement. Um, there's lots and lots of applications for our, uh, our conferencing microphones. So let's just kind of quickly run through some of the products. This is just a, a very brief overview, so I'm going to be moving pretty quick. If you've got questions, um, we can deal with them after uh, at the end of the, the presentation. So let's just quickly go through dynamic vocal mics. So this is some of Audix's very first products. Um, and design philosophy is a tailored frequency response. So we have six different dynamic vocal mics, and each one of those mics is designed to do something a little bit different. Um, they all have some common attributes, though, and that is superior off-axis rejection. Um, this is really where the clarity comes in. So most uh, microphones out there, you're going to get a lot of bleed from other instruments on stage, um, and our microphones, they just reject that right at the capsule, which means you're going to have a much cleaner sound your vocalists will hear themselves better in their monitors. Um, it uh, really, uh, really helps things. And then, of course, the uh, another side effect of that is they're very resistant to feedback. Um, jumping on to, to dynamic instrument mics, this is our i5. Um, this is kind of the one mic for Audix that's an exception to our application-specific uh, philosophy. 
And I like to call this the Swiss Army mic because it's a great mic for so many different applications from snare drums to guitar cabinets. I've used them on violins and horns and lots of different things. Um, if you're not sure what kind of mic to use on something, try an i5. Uh, it's a cardioid response mic, um, all metal construction. That's a big difference from one of our competitors. Um, if this gets hit with a stray drumstick, it's not going to bust off a little plastic grill. Um, and of course, again, tailored frequency response. This is a, a, a hallmark of, of all of Audix's designs. Uh, we've designed our mics so that you don't need to put a lot of EQ on them to get a good sound. Uh, very high SPL handling. Um, drum microphones. Again, Audix is the leader when it comes to drum microphones. Um, this is just a very brief list of a lot of our artist endorsees uh, from Todd Zuckerman with Sticks, uh, Thomas Lang, Stanton Moore. Uh, with Galactic, um, Stephen Perkins, Travis Barker. I mean, it, the list just goes on and on and on. This is an, uh, an area where Audix is the dominant uh, company when it comes to drum microphones. Uh, our D6 kick drum microphone, that's one of the best-selling uh, 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 mics in the world. So um, I'm just going to start quickly going through this because we're – Wireless microphones. Uh, again, uh, this is our AP Performance Series Wireless. This has been a great category. We introduced this last year. It's been in the market for about a year. Um, lots of different models to choose from. Um, some things that make it unique are the amount of frequency spectrum available, uh, up to 207 pre-coordinated frequencies, um, up to 24 unique channels, simultaneous use, uh, we have single or dual channel systems available and all kinds of different configurations. Um, and they work great, up to 450 feet operating range. Jumping into condensers. This has uh, a, a become a very big category for us. The microphone that you see there on the right is our SCX-1 microphone. We like to refer to this as the mothership because this is one of the first condenser mics that we developed and it is, um, has, has a lot of offspring, so to speak, uh, as we've taken some of the design elements and brought it into other applications. Um, SCX25A, what we call the lollipop mic, uh, this has a lot of great uh, uses. Drum overheads and piano are probably the two primaries. Um, what's unique? It has a floating capsule, which means that capsule has an internal suspension shock mount that's actually patented. Uh, there's no other microphone that, that has a, a capsule design like that. Uh, artists from Todd Zuckerman, David Garibaldi, Tower of Power, Stevie Wonder, Paul McCartney, Joe, Can Joe Sample, um, they're using it on pianos. Um, very low proximity effect. Um, and like I mentioned, it's a great piano mic system. This is just a quick shot of how these would be arranged in a piano. Um, the mic can go right down close to the strings, and uh, it doesn't get boomy, and this allows you to completely close the lid and isolate the mics. So this is where things really get interesting. Uh, I mentioned that that SCX-1 microphone was the mothership, and this is uh, one of its offspring. This, this series of microphones called the micros. That SMT circuit board line that you saw earlier, that is what led us to develop these microphones that are very, very small. What's unique is that that is a complete microphone, meaning capsule, preamp, everything all in that one body. This means you have a balanced signal right from the mic, lots of different applications from hanging to stand mounting, um, and uh, you know, obviously very low self noise and, and so on. Um, from there, that led us to choir miking applications and a unique product called the Micro Boom. This is another area where uh, this is the best selling choir mic in, in America. Um, and if you're involved in any kind of house of worship or school, 
uh, type uh, customers, this is uh, something that uh, you should be looking into. Um, it's a carbon fiber boom arm, um, and it uses that micros technology. So that same mic that was in our SCX1 Studio condenser mic has been shrunken down and is now available in a very low profile uh, system that uh, lets the people see the choir on stage rather than looking at a bunch of gear. Uh, I'm a bit of a weirdo. I like to see gear on the stage, um, but most people aren't uh, as, as unique as I am. <laughs> So uh, that's the micro booms. Again, I'm I'm apologize. I'm going pretty fast here, but I want to be able to get through this stuff, and then we can answer all your questions afterwards. Uh, here's a quick shot of uh, the micro booms on stage. As you can see, uh, they kind of blend into the background, and you don't uh, you don't notice them that much. So those micros led us into the conferencing uh, world. If you think about choir miking, choir miking is distance miking. Conference room miking, ceiling mics is distance miking. So a lot of those same microphone designs, we've been able to slightly adjust the application, come up with some different form factors and created some incredible uh, sounding microphones. So ceiling mics, um, what do they share in, in common? Obviously we need something with very high output or high sensitivity since we're miking at distance. Um, these mics have been optimized for speech clarity, meaning essentially what we've done is anything below 100 hertz we've rolled off, anything over 10K we've rolled off. So we've really focused on that vocal speech range. Um, and because of that balanced preamp built into the microphone, you have an immunity from RF interference. Um, obviously they're very small. Um, and no external power adapters. Um, if you don't know, uh, because we're building stuff here in the US, all of our microphone designs are TAA compliant. Uh, that stands for the Trade Agreement Act. Essentially, these are US made or designated country end products of the USA. So quickly, let's run through these. M40, um, this was the first ceiling mic uh, that we specifically designed for conferencing. Again, application-specific design. Uh, in fact, one of our fellow Oregonian companies, uh, Biamp, uh, they loved this mic so much that uh, they asked us to make an OEM model for them, um, which uh, they call the CM1. Um, they're available in 6 and 12-inch lengths. Uh, choice of your capsules, and again, that same immunity. Each one of these microphones covers about 125 square feet per microphone. Typically, we'll recommend a spacing of about eight feet in between each mic for if you've got a multi-purpose room and need multiple mics. Video conferencing, audience capture for distance learning, um, lots of other applications like I mentioned earlier. Um, M55. This is kind of the same capsule and preamp, but again, in a different form factor. If somebody needs a straight hanging solution that has an adjustable height, um, uh, very easy to position, very easy to adjust the, the height. There's a little locking collar that you can just loosen and you either uh, pull the cable down a little more or push it back up in there to adjust the height. Um, same uh, cardioid, hypercardioid shotgun or Omni capsules available. This comes with a plenum rated junction box. Um, a lot of jobs, installs for fire codes and things, you need to have a, a plenum box. Um, and that same coverage, um, 125 square feet. This is based roughly on the mic being placed approximately eight feet above finished floor. If you're wondering what AFF means, um, that is above finished floor. M70, this is a very popular microphone. Uh, gives a, a clean look of a flush mount uh, solution. It's a very sensitive mic. Um, to the untrained eye, it just looks like some little like fire sprinkler or sound masking speaker or something like that. Very low profile. Most people won't even notice them in the ceiling. Um, interesting. We installed M70 microphones, or I shouldn't say we, one of our dealers installed M70 microphones into SpaceX 
for their flex, flex seating conference rooms. Um, interesting thing is on the other end of that conference room, on the remote end, who they were talking to happened to be NASA. And NASA was so impressed with the sound quality from the M70 that NASA has now standardized all of their conference rooms with M70s as well. Um, it's about a three inch diameter, very high sensitivity. Um, there's some directionality built into it, so you can actually point the capsule underneath that grill towards the sound source or away from a noise source if you need it. Um, and again, it has all those same features uh, and coverage area of the, uh, the other conferencing mic. We also make a version of this for a hard mount ceiling called the GS1. So if you've got a drywall ceiling, we got a mic for that uh, as well. Everything's the same, just in a, a slightly different form factor for different installation types. And the M3. This is the best-selling tri-element ceiling mic on the market. It's become the global standard for all of Amazon's conference rooms worldwide. We've deployed thousands of these microphones to date all over the world, and there's more future installs scheduled to come. Um, these mics are also in Facebook and many, many, many other uh, uh, businesses as well. Um, uh, it has a smaller footprint than some of our competitors, you know, golf ball style ceiling mics. Um, very simple to install. Um, they look great, they sound amazing. Uh, what you see here is three individual capsules. So those same capsules that were in the M40 and the M55 and the M70, the M3 has three of them. And they're very precisely arranged so that you're getting consistent 360 degree, degree coverage all the way around the microphone. And there's no weird phasing or dropouts or anything that happens as you move around in between capsules or lobes um, of, the, of the coverage. So it's a, a great sounding solution. They work really well in rooms that have a lot of reflective surfaces. Um, they, they have good off access rejection. For, for that. So who is using these microphones? This is just kind of a, a, a brief kind of thing to, to close this out. As you can see, there's some, some pretty heavy hitters in this from, you know, of course, being Oregon, I got to point out, uh, you know, the, the Oregon Ducks, um, but FBI, Air Force, Amazon, Facebook, Walmart, MetLife, Verizon, Citigroup. It just goes on and on and on. And this is just a tiny little smattering of, of where these microphones are. So um, that's uh, that's about all I have. I, uh, I know I was going super fast. Um, so uh, if you have any questions, please let us know. But uh, thank you for your time, guys. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Todd. Uh, guys, again, like he said, I want to thank you guys for taking time out of your day. Uh, if you guys have any questions, now would be a great time to post them since we do have Todd right on the line with us. Uh, I know how it works. As soon as we get off the webinar, the questions are going to roll in. Uh, if that happens, feel free to reach out to myself, to your local sales account manager at Capital, to Audix. Give Todd a call. He put his contact info right there shoot him an email um we're all here to help we answer the phone <laughs> <laughs> i will attest to that you know it's i i was giving todd a hard time because he puts his extension in his email uh signature and you don't need to put in the extension because if it's business hours somebody answers it doesn't give you the option to put the extension in uh they are there to answer the phone to help you guys out uh, just like Capital, you know, we are here to help out. Um, so want to hear about your guys' projects, your guys' questions. And, uh, you know, a lot of those questions pop up. Hey, what mic is is right? Because not every mic is right for the right uh, same application, uh, like Todd was stating. And uh, we're, he we're all here to help you guys choose the right mic for the job. All right. First question came in, what is the coverage of the M3? 
That is a great question, and I apologize because I was trying to uh, get uh, get through this in uh, in a, a, a brief amount of time, and I might have skipped over that. So, an M3 will cover it, cover an area up to about 400 square feet. Um, it's all going to depend on the room. Um, there's a lot of uh, you know integrators out there that will uh, space them closer than than that. Um, I think of a, an area of about 15 feet by 15 feet, so about 15 feet in between the microphones would be good. It's you know it's it's more than double the coverage area of our single element microphones. All right, another question. So our conferencing mics uh, actually don't use a, a three-pin XLR. Um, most of them will use either um, a, a Phoenix-type connector, uh, or in some cases, it's RJ45. Uh, they're they're not designed to plug right into a uh, a, a PC like a like a USB mic. Uh, they're designed to be uh, uh, used with a uh, a DSP from companies like Biamp or Symmetrix. Uh, so uh, we do offer a a USB microphone. Uh, it's called the USB 12. It's essentially a, a 12 inch gooseneck type mic. Uh, which is a fantastic solution if you're doing Skype and, and things like that. Uh, it's, uh, they, they sound amazing. Uh, interesting story. My, my father was on the, uh, the, the board of a, uh, a school, and they were interviewing for a new principal, and they were getting applicants from all over the world. So they were doing a lot of Skype interviews. And he called me up and he said, hey, do you have a, a microphone that I can use for this? Go figure, his son's a microphone guy. Um, but what they were struggling with is they were doing these Skype interviews and they're kind of huddled around a computer trying to use the computer's mic and it just wasn't cutting it to be able to pick up six people sitting around a table. So we put our USB 12 in front of them and those uh, those six guys um, sat around the USB 12 at a distance of about five or six feet away from the mic. And uh, he called me up the next day and uh, said, I got good news and bad news. The good news is your mic worked fantastic. The bad news is you're not getting it back. <laughs> so uh, that's a great solution for, for that kind of application. But most of our ceiling type microphones are designed to be used with a with a DSP. And if you guys run into a situation where you are doing multiple mics in the ceiling, uh, but you want to be able to interface it with the computer, reach out to myself, reach out to your guys at Capital. We can put together a solution that works with the Audix microphones as well as the USB audio interface. We do have some options. Uh, for that, if it does need to have more than one microphone, if it is a larger space or an installed application, uh, and we can help design that up application for you. Perfect. Any other questions, guys? Great one so far. Like Todd said, a lot of info. It's very hard to go over a whole line in 20 minutes. Um, as you can see, we took 30 minutes, uh, and we still barely scratched the surface. Uh, so. There is a lot of stuff. Uh, hop on Audix website, check it out. Reach out to Audix, reach out to us. Um, we're all here to help. So great, great products. Honestly, a really great prices, price points for what you're getting. Um, it just a just a top notch line, and we're so excited to have Audix now as an option at Capital. And we get to work with guys like Todd. So. <laughs> Well, we, we really enjoy working with, uh, with Capital, and we're excited about this. Um, you know, like, uh, like Chris said, um, if you want to know more about the line, talk to, uh, to your, your guys at Capital. 
uh, reach out to us directly too. We'd, we'd love to talk to you more. There's more information on the Audix website, which is audixusa.com. Uh, you, you'll, if you start poking around on there, you'll see we kind of barely scratched the surface in terms of the, the products that, uh, uh, that we offer. So thank you so much. I really enjoyed uh, speaking with you all today. Hope you have a, a great rest of the day. And thanks, Todd. And, uh, and again, guys, thanks a lot for taking time on your day. Like Todd just said, if you guys have any questions, we're all here to help out. I uh, look forward to hearing from you guys. And if there are no more questions, uh, we're going to wrap her up. So thank you, Todd. And I uh, look forward to working with you guys in the future every day. Awesome. Thank you. All right.